What's going on YouTube? Thanks for tuning in to the Rolling Times and today we're going to take a look at my BMW E36 302 V8 swap. So we've made a lot of progress on this thing. I think since the last time that I've done a video on it, uh, I'm trying to think, I think the last video that I focused on this car um, was when we pulled the original motor out of it. So since then, we've got the V8 in there. I custom made some motor mounts. Um, I don't know if you can see them down in there. That one you can see. So I custom made some motor mounts, put a new oil pump in this thing. We painted the valve covers, fabbed up some custom manifolds that don't look the prettiest, but they will get the job done for sure. Uh, it does have a T5 trans out of a 94 Mustang behind the 302. Let me take a look in the car. Around all the mess. Right here's the shifter. If we take a look under the car. We got a custom cross member in there. And a Ford Mustang drive shaft. I got a custom flange from jagsatrun.com and that allows me to adapt this drive shaft to the stock BMW differential. Take a look up here on the transmission. I custom fabbed a bracket on the transmission to mount a slave cylinder. This slave cylinder is an external slave from a Nissan I believe. Uh, we still got to bleed that, but if all goes well, that should actuate the clutch. Now, we did get to fire this up for the first time since I bought the motor, which is pretty cool to see it run inside the car. Uh, it wasn't running perfectly because the float was stuck on the carb, and it was just dumping fuel, plus the fuel in this thing is probably going on two years old now. Um, <clears throat> so that combined with bad fuel and the, the float leaking and everything, it wasn't running the best but it did run we didn't want to run it for too long because i got to finish the cooling system as you can see uh i think that's going to be pretty easy we're going to use a stock bmw radiator i just got to find a place to mount a uh expansion tank um i do have to do some wiring i was going to try and utilize some of the stock harness here uh for my signal wire to the alternator and to the starter but I wasn't I hooked up a battery to it we weren't getting any juice to any of that stuff when I turned the key and whatnot so I'm just gonna have to wire up some custom switches but basically uh, push the start button um, a toggle switch for the ignition power a toggle switch for the fuel pump and we should be good so I'm gonna play that video of us getting it to run a little bit in the car That was from Sunday night or Saturday night, I believe. And then we were trying to get it to run better before I took the carb off. I was uh, I pulled the distributor out and retimed it because technically with a Ford distributor, uh, you want the rotor to be facing cylinder cylinder number one on top dead center, and it wasn't. All the all the plugs were in the right firing order, but the rotor wasn't where it was supposed to be. So I pulled it out and tried to retime it, and uh, I realized afterwards because it wouldn't run. I realized that I think. I actually have it 180 degrees out. So what I did was I thought I was at top dead center on the compression stroke for cylinder number one, which is the front bank on or the front cylinder on the passenger side. But I believe I was at the top of the exhaust stroke and that's probably why it didn't run. So we're gonna pull this out, retime it uh, the proper way. And then I sent the carb out to get rebuilt 
I was thinking about doing it, but I don't even really want to show you guys how shitty my garage is right now. I definitely don't want to be rebuilding the carb in here. And at this point, I kind of just got to get this thing done and out of here. So to start, as far as resetting the timing, we're going to go ahead and pull our cylinder one plug, which is nice and easy to do right now because I don't have the front end on the car. So what I found the best way to do this, if you can't find the marks on your crank or on your harmonic balancer and you're not sure where top dead center is. So after you pull that spark plug out, just put your thumb over the hole, the spark plug hole. Have you put it stuck again? Um, so I realized when I filmed this, I had my thumb over the mic. But basically what I was trying to say here is when you're cranking over the motor, if you put your thumb over the spark plug hole on cylinder number one, um, you'll be able to feel the compression stroke because um, that means both valves are closed. The other way to do it, I guess a proper way to do it would be to pull the valve cover and see uh, when the intake valve closes. That would be another way to do it. But I believe we are on our compression stroke for cylinder one right now. So what we're going to do, you can do this with a screwdriver, a straw, whatever. You're going to want to put a straw or something into the cylinder. And you're gonna wanna watch that or have somebody watch it while you turn the motor over. Let me see uh, if I can set the camera somewhere where you guys will be able to see it. So now it's starting to, I know my hand's in the way. Now it's starting to go down, so we want to go back a little bit. So I know that wasn't the best video, but it's, it definitely helps when you have two people. Basically, you have one person turning over the motor, one person watching the straw or the screwdriver or whatever. Um, and once that straw gets to the top, you want to wait till it starts going back down and then turn it back right where it's you want it at the very top and that's going to be top dead center once you're at top dead center if you take a look here i have this clear rotor here or clear distributor cap that you can see through the rotor should be lined up with cylinder one at top dead center well when i retimed it last night or thought i retimed it cylinder one is over here and our rotor is over here. So I believe what I did is I actually have it 180 degrees out of time. So I'm gonna pull this cap off the distributor. We're gonna pull the distributor back out and then uh, reset it. And I should be able to put this cap back on and everything should be in the right order. You wanna be careful when you're taking these distributors out. There's a shaft that goes into them that goes down to your oil pump. Shed some light on the situation. That's not centered because they never stay centered. And a lot of times when you pull the distributor up out, the shaft doesn't stay centered in the hole and it's kind of on an angle and you can't get the distributor back in. And I don't really know why I'm telling you to be careful because it's not really anything you can control. If it happens, it happens. And only way to line that shaft back up is to pull the pan and line the shaft back up really so we have our bolt out we're gonna lift this out oh so what we want here is we want this rotor to face where cylinder one is now these aren't straight cut gears so when we drop it down in it's actually going to start rotating so you don't want to set it perfectly where you want it right away You actually want to set it a little behind. And it actually it rotated that way. So we want to set it a little bit ahead.
That's not quite where we want it. One more time. I believe that is about where we want it. But we're not going to get it back in. So we have acquired a brandy to help film. <coughs> so I don't have to film and try and do this with Shut one up. hand. Uh, but as you can see, I think I finally got the distributor in the right position. I had to drop it in a few times and it didn't want to line up right. Every time it got to the right spot, it wouldn't go all the way down in. So as I was dropping it in, I rotated the engine back and forth a little bit and then it dropped right down where it should be. The rotor's pointing towards cylinder one. We're on top dead center of the compression stroke. So now we can put our little holder on here. And I gotta find the wrench. The wrench! The wrench? The wrench. The wrench. And we're just gonna snug this enough that the distributor doesn't move if it gets bumped, but we can still adjust it a little bit. And then our wire should still be in the right order because the firing order didn't change. Is the straw supposed we to just stay had it 180 degrees out. Now we gotta take the straw out, but we can't run it. What's anyway, missing? <laughs> they already know what's missing. So now once I get my car back, it should run. No guarantees. Germans call it sabotage. Ford fans are all pissed off. My Beamer's got a 302. We're gonna drift around you. That's going to wrap up the video for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Maybe you just learned that I can't sing. If you guys want to know more about my build or have any questions for me, just drop a comment. I love interacting with you guys. And if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and a subscribe and hit that bell. This is Zach from The Rolling Times. We'll see you in the next video.